one of my biggest complaints about van life is how uncomfortable the seat is on really long drives. It's not actually the seat itself that's uncomfortable, it's really just the seat height. In our last van we had a swivel seat that raised the seat approximately one and a half inches higher than the seat was originally planned to be which actually made it super uncomfortable on long drives because my feet barely touch the ground. Unfortunately, the height of your swivel seat is not really something people think about until generally it's too late. So when Kevin reached out to Alpine Mechanisms to partner with us, I was super psyched. Currently, Alpine Mechanisms offers the lowest profile swivel seat on the market, only raising the seat a half inch. How's it? How's it? How are we doing? I'm getting pretty much ready to go. All right. Got my handy dandy horses here, out there as well. It's freezing in here, or out here. Nice and cozy warm. Look at these puppies. Super thin. In our last van, we only had a swivel on the passenger side, but for this van, we have two swivels because we're gonna have a full complete little lounge area for four people in total. She's thin. Hopefully this install is a lot easier than the last one because on our last van, that's what we'll see didn't really line up with the frame of the seat in the van, and I had to use a lot of force to get them in. The only caveat with this van is that we have heated seats, so I have to deal with electrical wires and make sure I don't screw anything up. Mercedes loves their Torx bits and bolts for whatever reason, so luckily I have this kit from our last build, which is e torque sockets to get these bolts off, and I'm gonna be using an E12 to get the factory bolts off. Before disconnecting the battery, you need to loosen the bolts on here and you have to use the electronics to move the seat forward and back if you have electronic seats. So don't forget to do that before disconnecting. Look who's back. Can't get rid of them. It's the Halloween decorations. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's frightening. Yeah, you like them, don't you? Yeah, it's frightening. Yeah. This man has more Halloween decorations in front of his house than the entire neighborhood combined. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? I am the star of YouTube. And let me tell you, Mr. You that owns YouTube texted me yesterday of a $50,000 per interview that I get. Wow. And we'll need some donations because we don't have those type of fun. There's something wrong. What? And you look younger. I look younger? I don't know what's wrong with you, but I'm calling your dad. Call him. I am. Let him know we're working. Are you coming to help us install a seat? To supervise, yeah. Oh, okay, perfect. Is that why you left the dogs at home? Well, let me tell you something. Uh, I don't like the dashboard. The dashboard doesn't have Thank enough. Uh, uh, I don't know what what it has enough of. But you don't like it? It's a big time screen. It's great. It's got CarPlay and everything. Yeah, well, we'll see what Mercedes thinks about this when you when you get your lawsuit filed against you, okay, for impersonating a, a, a Mercedes. Yeah, make it in our own. Yeah. Look at these swivels; they're nice. Low profile. We're gonna be able to rotate. What the hell is that for? <laughs> it's a swivel seat. It's going under the seats, and then it's, the seats will rotate. It's so we can have a seat up front. Yeah. So we're doing we have that. a seat up front. No, know. no, we're going to put a little table over here and have like a little dinette. And it rotates. So the suite, the seats rotate backwards and you can have... It'd be like a little booth. See? Well, since you're only going to the gym once in a while, uh, make sure it can handle two to three hundred pounds, all right? <laughs> so every time you turn the thing, it doesn't break, right? <laughs> I'm sure it can handle that much weight. Well, you and Swift need Jenny Craig. <laughs> That's sweet of you, Glenn. All right, I'm back down. All right. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Oh, classic. Can't get anything done around here. He's nuts. He's absolutely nuts. Oh. If you're in the new market for a Sprinter van, 
apparently they have them coming directly from the manufacturer with civils, swivels built in. So that could save you some time if you're lucky enough to get one, but I heard they're few and far between. I think it's like a custom order thing. All right, all the screws are off. I gotta disconnect the battery now. There are two wires that I need to disconnect and I'm using this little, I don't know, clip tool thing to get these off. But on the 2022 Sprinter vans, it's the yellow and the white one. You can pretty much tell exactly which one it is from the wire. Okay, wire's off. In the last van, our seat belt was connected to the seat, which is another thing that you had to think about and consider, which is a huge pain in the butt. And this one, it's actually connected to the frame of the van. So good on you, Mercedes, for thinking about that and making our life a little easier. Good on you, eh? Good on you, eh? <laughs> Alright, is it easier to get it from here or from here? Definitely from where you're standing right now. Yeah, well, speak for yourself. I got, I'm got. i the one who's got to pick it up, you know what I mean? I mean, it can't be that heavy. Nope, he's struggling. I'll go this way. Mm. Ah, now it's light. That's what I just said. Okay. We have to remove the locating pins is what they're called because Mercedes has it so it locks in place and can't go any further back or any further forward. We need to get these off in order to swivel the seat. You got yourself a snack there? I did have myself a snack. I already ate it. It's not gummy bears, but it'll do. Well, snack sounds nice to be honest. Safety first. Got some uh, Rust-Oleum protective paint. Just gonna paint these uh, bare metal areas now so it doesn't rust. I would recommend it. I don't know if you have to. What's next, Chica? As per the instruction manual, we should place the seat swivel on the seat base with a large hole towards the inside of the vehicle and the plunger nut <laughs> towards the rear of the vehicle. Gray side up for driver's side, black side up for passengers. Please reference the picture below and be sure to have the offset, I don't know what that is, but this is the picture that they want us to reference. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got that. My prints are screwed up, all right? Jeez, not my fault. All right, let's get after it. We do need to remove this little foam protector thing and then run the wires through. Oh, that's gonna be gone completely? Yeah. Woo! Wow, that looks a good, like a good place for storage. The old location for the S-Bar heater. We're not- Oh, he wants to give them secrets? We're not doing an S-Bar heater in this one. We're gonna do something a little different, a little bit more practical. But yeah, this is such a good use of space. Like, I would love to just cut a huge... And put like a little drawer here. Yeah. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, but I don't know if that uh, would take away from the structure, structural integrity of the seat. And we don't need you or me flying through the windshield because of that. So I don't know if it's worth the risk. If anyone has seen people cut this out and you're familiar with that process, let me know, but I'm gonna make a guess and say that it's gonna reduce the strength of it. Rats, no, no extra storage in here for us, I guess. Woohoo! Fits like a glove. So this is right, right? According to the directions, all to the back left, plunger nut in the back. Gray side up for driver's side. Black side up for passenger. This is the passenger. Well, is it this gray or this? Oh, I guess it's the top. You might be right. Here's the hardware kit for the swivel seat. You basically got eight bolts, a plunge nut, and a support bracket. I got my handy little six millimeter Allen key here for these bolts. And we're gonna be putting these flat ones 
through the swivel seat into the seat pedestal. Last but not least, we gotta put the support bracket in, and that's why you don't wanna tighten it down all the way. And this slides to the furthest corner, the front most corner, outside the van. And you snug it right underneath this bolt. And that, I believe, keeps this swivel from going that way. I think that's the intent. Okay, this is flush. The instructions say to tighten all four corners kind of at the same time, not just tighten one corner all the way and then the next corner all the way to help make sure it's in aligned. And if you have a foot pounds thing, then go to 35 foot pounds. Oh, he's back. I'll run my new one number two, please. Uh, I'm sure you're up higher than that. Uh, there he goes. Second time today, Glenn's made his appearance. You might be wondering why the plunge bolt is in the back, not in the front like most swivels. And the reason for it is because this swivel is meant to swivel with just twisting your arms. On our last one, we had to use... On our last one, we had to use a lot of force and sit on it and really torque our body. This... Hallelujah. Oh yeah. That's like a glue. Now we're using these ones to connect the seat to the swivel. I had to move the seat. I had to connect everything, move it all the way up, which was a bummer. And scoot it over. And scoot it over. So it's not directly on top of the thing. True that. So this is going underneath into the black for the passenger. Then this is a 17 mil bolt here. That keeps it in place. Nuts and bolts. It's just a couple of nuts and bolts, folks. That's all it is. Nuts and bolts. Ah, oh, a snug little fit there. Yippers! Wow, a little dual action. I'm a dually. <laughs> it's actually only has one mil in the back. Yeah, true, it's not a dually. 35 foot-pounds again, which is really hard to do without a torque wrench. Are you moving it? Yeah. Oh, it's just getting tough. Well, I don't want to, I'm trying to be careful. I don't want to over tighten it. Yeah. That feels good. Kevin has a tendency to overdo things and break things. I just don't know how to trend sometimes. What did I over tighten the one time that I just destroyed it? You've broken a lot of things by uh, over tightening. All right, let's not reminisce. <laughs> I mean, if that doesn't line up perfectly. It's really good. Look at that. Alpine mechanics for the win. Yeah, I really Mechanisms. Like <laughs> <laughs> you can't get it right. Mechanisms. Alpine mechanisms for the win. Yeah, I'm stoked. And it's so low, the profile. It's only so adding. Low? So low? So low. It's only adding half an inch. Super easy to install. Life's good. All right, we got it done here. Here's a quick test. Lift that up. Just with the hands. Beautiful. Easy to do. Time to move on to the driver's seat, which is a little bit more complicated because of the e-brake, but I am super stoked on this. A little paint action. Picasso. I was just gonna say that. <laughs> Call me Picasso. <laughs> oh Lord. What's next? Next, we need to modify the e-brake because the driver passenger won't swivel unless you lower the e-brake down. So we need to do that. And we have this 
Handy dandy email. Bracket email. E break map. Bracket. Yeah, email. Whatever. Alright, here we go. Well, no storage options in here. No. No can do, miss. This is what we have to move. Setting up the uh, phone tripod since we're doing a short form content build series as well on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube Shorts. So, if you don't follow us, <coughs> do your cough and interrupt me again, you know what I mean? Oh my god. I think so, I have a tickle in my throat. This is not good lighting, sir. So, if you don't follow us on Instagram, I would advise you do if you want to check out the short video clips of the build. Oh! And it's broken. Kind of sounded like that, didn't it? Sure did. Oh, there's a clip. Well, probably not anymore. Oh! Not broken. <laughs> not broken. <laughs> Close, but not broken. Okay. These two bolts need to come off. 17 mil. Super simple. All right, so since Kevin's not giving you good instructions, you take the e-brake off of that little doohickey, and then you add this piece. Oh, he already connected it. I was wondering what you were doing. This piece. Oh. Wait, you don't think you're doing it properly? I need to read the instructions. <laughs> oh, no. here we go. He didn't instruct you because he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> Heard it here first. Oh, they have the instructions online, so give me one second. You mean you didn't start reading them and educate yourself before there's the project? There's two different links. There's one mm. for the swivel, and then there's one mm. for the e brake I didn't see it. Seems as if e someone might have come out here unprepared for installation. Isn't that right? Also, it is 149, 12.49, almost lunchtime. We're only halfway down the project. These bolts. These that are in here, I think they're just in here just so you don't lose them. These actually go up top into this because it's, see how there's a groove for it? Yeah, we see the groove. Goes right there, like so. Yeah, that's what I said. You said that? Yeah, you didn't hear me? No. Hmm. She thinks she knows it all. <laughs> I think. Just think how much more boring this install would have been without me. Super boring. What can I say? This e-brake is too high, so i got to pull the wire down from underneath the van because there's a grommet, and you want to pull it and make sure if you pushed it down, you might push that grommet right through, and you don't want to do that. So I'm going to go underneath and then pull it. Try not to get too wet since it's raining. Pretty much like the worst day to be doing this, but we have limited time. So to, unless you want to go underneath. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. Oh, perfect. Here. Yeah. <laughs> well. in, in another lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the main boot underneath the seat. Here, this guy right here is the e-brake, and you can tell I just pulled this down right there. So I uh, solved an issue. Solved? Well, Kevin's gonna solve the issue. I found the issue. Jeez, you only take credit for doing <laughs> sticks. No, it's a good issue now. Anyway, the plastic on the Break. emergency brake goes down really low in the front to, I guess, protect the plug that we're pulling down. And because we're lowering it, it's now hitting the floor. So we have to trim it in order for both bolts to be able to go into the new connector so that it will be usable. Because right now we cannot attach the bolt. I mean, you could have solved this. That's it? I could have done that. You just wanted the credit, didn't oh, you? Here, do it. Do the other side. Huh. You just wanted the credit. Oh, yeah. Problem solver. Tay-Tay, that's what they call me. Tay-Tay, the problem solver. Now, I can get the bolt in. I did that.
Next, we have to cut out this part so it fits like so. Probably have to cut a little off the bottom too, but first things first. Look at that. Perfection. It's all about the right tools. When you have the right tools. Thank God for Harbor Freight. Oh. That's beautiful. What we didn't realize is when we took this off, we actually broke the clip right in here that kind of keeps it snug. So we're going to have to buy a new one from Mercedes. I think they have the part number right here. So hopefully they have these in stock. If not, we'll have to order one. Hopefully it's not too expensive because we all know Mercedes parts get a little pricey. Not but, to mention it's a piece of plastic. Yeah, you got to be careful when you take this off because you might break the clip. But you have to do it in order to trim the piece so the e-brake works properly. Well, at least we can get the swivel on still and finish the project pretty much. Yeah, let's do it since we just wasted about we did waste a lot 45 of time. minutes on this little devil. It's not a big deal. It's a cheap piece of plastic, so. And it wasn't really looking that great. No, it wasn't. <laughs> swivel time. Swivel time it is. I thought it was lunch time. We don't eat while we're working, girl. <laughs> Since Kevin doesn't eat while he works, I usually cook him all his meals while he works. So I'm going to go heat us up a little leftovers from yesterday. Probably not going to be the healthiest lunch, but it's going to be quick, it's going to be easy, and it's going to be tasty. <laughs> I could munch into this because once I have a little bit, it's like hard for me to stop. I know it looks banging. It looks so good. I'm gonna put the seat on the pedestal first. Just screw it down lightly, and then I'll. Okay. All right. Well, Thank I you. mean, you already eat? it's for both of us. Oh, okay. Cool. You can eat all of it. Mmm. So good. Okay, this is plugged in, battery, and then two bolts on the front, and we, how comfortable do I look? Very comfortable. Let's back it up. It still works. You didn't break anything yet. Hopefully we don't have codes. We already have the SOS one from last install, so. It's <laughs> still not fixed. In case anyone was wondering. It's not lit up anymore. It will be once we turn the car on. Oh. Ugh, put the whole body into it. Alright, that's probably 35 foot pounds. Alright, I think this one's good. We're, we're done? We can go inside now? Well, we still need to take a thumbnail, <laughs> take some pictures on the phone, do our Instagram reel, <laughs> all that fun stuff. What? In our old van, my feet were like this the whole time. So I just ended up sitting the entire time like this. It was nice to be able to put my feet on the ground. The project is completo. We're going to demonstrate how we're going to use them. Will I have to pull the seat up anymore? No. Ah. What do I do? No squeak. That's a plus. We never had dull soles though. That's going to be sweet. The little couch right here. This is easy to turn with just your hands. It's actually recommended to do it with just your hands. The uh, it's quite nice. low profile, super easy to install compared to the other one where I was like really bending the metal and really trying the to The hardest part is the e-brake. Just the plastic, really. And that's only if you break it. So a big thank you to Alpine Mechanisms for partnering with us and hooking us up with these two swivel seats. We are so stoked on them and we can't wait to incorporate these into our full build once it's completed, whenever that's going to be. Hopefully sooner rather than later. Yep. In the next episode, we might be ditching the van for a minute because we need to do a renovation project and then we'll be getting to windows. So stay tuned.